are you? Well, first of all, thank you so much for your time. I'm Carmen from from Donde Ir Magazine. It's a city oh. guide from Mexico City. Um, awesome. First of all, I would like to know how are you? I understand that there is no more quarantine in New Zealand, right? We've actually just like recently gone back into it, but we're coming out on Sunday, so it's Wednesday right now. But we were out of um, out of lockdown for a little while, um, but yeah, we have just gone back into it. Uh, what was the first thing that you did as soon as you were free to go out? Ooh, uh, I went to a gig. Live shows were back on, so I went like straight to going and watching live performances. Oh, and can we know who, who you watch? Um, yeah, like these really these there are lots of artists in New Zealand um, who are kind of part of the like the indie scene. We wish for music concerts I know. here. Mexico. Lucky you, but oh my um, gosh. Uh, Stella, I heard that you were creating new music under this lockdown, no? So I would yes. like to know the story about this single, The Snail, and mm -hmm. what's the story behind this song? <laughs> yes, um, this is my, I mean, it is my lockdown song. I wrote it when I came out of lockdown in the studio, um, and I was like fascinated by snails for some reason in lockdown, and at my parents' house where I was um, staying, There, I feel like there are just so many snails, and I was kind of just like wondering what it would, what a little snail would be thinking if it looked at a human, like, and wondering like why, why it's not outside. And it's because of lockdown, and I decided to write a song about it. Well, and <laughs> you, you may know that TikTok became very popular. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, here in Mexico during this lockdown, so mm -hmm. your song Super Only became very popular too. It was already, mm -hmm. but became again. Mm -hmm. So tell me, please, about becoming a big success and su sensation on TikTok with your song. Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty crazy. Like, um, I wasn't really very familiar with the app until like the start of this year. So it's been yeah. insane kind of watching the song kind of take off on it while I've been in lockdown. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm new to it and it's been cool because I've been kind of, you know, I've been learning as it's been growing and it's, um, I mean, I've just been having a great time just watching people doing like dances to the song and stuff. But yeah, it's been awesome. And have you tried the challenge with Super Holy <laughs> and Glitter too? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have done, I've done the glitter one, but the super lonely one is a little bit difficult for me because I can't dance. Oh, well, <laughs> me neither, so I understand. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, super lonely sounds like a really happy song, but in the end it's talking about that girl whose heart is broken. So please tell me the story behind this song. Yeah. Um, I wrote it last year and it is a breakup song. So I broke up with my boyfriend before leaving to Los Angeles um, and I was going to be there for like a month to make music and I kind of just got there and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so lonely. And I kind of, <laughs> I don't know, I wanted to make it kind of upbeat and happy and be self-deprecating um, and poke fun at myself. Like, po yeah, poke fun at myself for, for being sad and feeling sorry for myself. So. It's like a, a sad, happy song. And how was this um, connection uh, with Luz Aperton, this collaboration? Oh yeah, um, well my guy Dan from Republic, um, my A&R guy, he is mates with Gus and he can kind of reached out and said to me that Gus was a fan and I was like, oh my goodness, that's crazy. And then he was like, what would you think of him possibly adding like a verse or something to Super Lonely? And I was like, oh, it's like, I love him. And, and he just sent through a demo and I was like, yeah, this is, this is awesome. Uh, now going back in time, I mean, you're so young, you're only 20. <laughs> so I would like to know how and when did your love for music started? Hmm. I think I, I mean, I feel like I've, for like as long as I can kind of remember, I've just been like obsessed with music and everything. And when I was like eight, I asked my parents if I could learn to um, the saxophone. So that's kind of when it like started, I think. And then, um, and then 
it wasn't until my final year of high school, which was 2017, when I kind of started releasing these covers on SoundCloud that I recorded. <laughs> and that was when I kind of realized like, oh my gosh, like this could actually be something really cool to try to pursue. Talking about the school, I, I know I read something about you dropping out of university only after two weeks, no? Mm -hmm. So I would like to know <laughs> if this was because you were following your dream in music or how this happened? Yeah, it was. It was, um, I was, I dropped out in the second week because I kind of just felt like I was being distracted doing, um, doing the course that I was doing, which was a communications degree. Um, because I was making music on the side and I kind of realized that I, f I felt like I wanted to like give it, give it all of my time for a while to kind of give it like a solid shot. Um, so I just, I dropped out. I dropped out. And did, do you regret no, dropping out? No, 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 I don't know what I would be doing if I, if I hadn't have dropped out. So I think it was definitely the right decision, I think. And how's to deal with all this success and fame at such a young age? Um, it's pretty, um, I mean, it's pretty insane, but I feel like I try not to overthink it because it'll just freak me out, you know? <laughs> yeah. You take your time to still going up with your friends and making oh, yeah. your life as Definitely. normal as possible. Yeah, I think it helps being in New Zealand because it's pretty like chill here and everyone's um, pretty kind of down to earth, so it's nice. And you started performing at very young age, so I would like to know if you were scary or what were the the challenges about performing so young. Mm. Yeah, I mean, hmm. It was, I remember like the first time that I ever played a gig and I was so nervous because I had like, I don't know, I had I had done kind of like, I guess I'd done, I had only ever done like one like singing competition in, in high school and I, so I kind of, I knew how scary it was to kind of get in front of people but the first gig I did was like a room full of like my friends and my family. So I think it kind of helped and it kind of eased me into it um, a bit but I, I still get really nervous. It was still scary. And um, where was the uh, first gig? It was um, in this venue called Nick of the Woods, which is in Auckland, New Zealand, which is where I live. I would like to know about your musical influences. Um, if you like other pop artists and female uh, pop artists. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of, I grew up listening to a lot of like Guru Mata and Radiohead and like Björk um, and like Lily Allen and Winehouse. So I think like like Björk and, and like Winehouse and stuff are probably like the female figures who I kind of look, and like Grace Jones, I feel like I kind of look up to them and still do. But I don't know, I'm always listening to new music, I think. And I, I think that's what's really exciting is that as I kind of find new music, my music kind of evolves and and changes and yeah. Cool. It's interesting that you mentioned Lily Allen because I remember the first time that I heard your music, I I thought about it in her. Really? <laughs> yeah. I love her. She's so cool. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> you too. So Thank you. now please tell me, is there an album in the works where it's coming uh, in the future for being Benny? Yes. Yes. I am currently in the process of, I'm almost like very, very close to the end of it. I'm just waiting for a few people to send their features um, back to me. So I'm very close and it'll come out in like, at least like, I mean, before the, before the end of the year, definitely. Well, and I hope uh, that when we can have some gigs and concerts here in Mexico, we have the chance yes. to see you alive. Yes, I would love that. I want to come to Mexico so bad. It'd be awesome. Well, Benny, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Cool beans. Nice to talk to you.